Okay, we're back again. I got a very cool guest again. It's uh, it's been a long time since I've talked to this dude. A very special person to to me actually, and especially this persona that you all know, because he and Gary Daly were one of maybe three, four, five people that pulled me up the ladder, and that's why I'm doing this and why you know my name as Fury. But uh, yeah, we're back with the Hua podcast and with my friend who can introduce himself however you want to right now. I'm Chance Lunsford. I'm a comic. I used to be Logos and Trivable. Maybe you also used to be Logos and Trivable. <laughs> While you're trying to figure out what that means, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Utah. Uh, my father's family were Utah pioneers. My mother's family were famous people from New York who moved to LA and lived disastrous lives. Uh, I'm exactly what you might expect from something like that. Uh, probably the reason I came into the internet world is because I lived a very dark and uh, crime-laden and sin-infused adolescence and young adulthood. And then I pulled myself out of the pit. I had a lot of help doing that, but I put in a lot of work and a lot of conscious effort to become something more than what I was. And when I made it to the point where I felt like I was somebody worth respecting, I also realized that the things that I did to get out of the place I was in needed to be shared because most of the people who came along the ride down didn't even start the climb back up. And uh, I saw people die and go to prison and uh, or just, you know, live these lives of misery. And I realized I would, if I could help a couple people uh, maybe not do that, that'd be cool. And as I developed my uh, sort of presence on the internet, I realized, well, that's cool and everything, but I just, I can't help but be exactly who I am. I'm an interesting guy. I think I'm very interesting uh, <laughs> because I am into all the things I'm interested in and I get deep in them and I can, you know, mm -hmm. I could just rant at length about, about yeah. a lot of stuff because I have a, you know, a pretty... Uh, remarkable memory and I just sometimes I'll sit for hours and just research on a subject and, mm -hmm. and really research not just uh, like read an opinion and go oh well I think I got it figured out now but get deep into it yeah and and then I you know I've had that podcast that you were on yeah. where I woke up uh, <laughs> after a night with the wife and recorded it in a hotel tub yeah yeah <laughs> and there's been a lot of great episodes of that podcast and um I didn't really take it serious for a yeah. long time. You know, it was a stupid name on purpose. I was kind of driving people away from me on purpose. Uh, but I figure if, if there's some value in what I have to offer, I'm going to continue to be my authentic self, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily want to have a barrier to entry for the people who want to find what I have to offer. And so mm -hmm. I, I have taken the last, you know, maybe five, six months to just do some thinking and reorient. Yeah. And, and this this podcast right here between you and I is sort of like my uh, re-entrance into the podcast world and to put my face out and to yeah. begin delivering my message a little more seriously. So that's that's kind of my rambling introduction that didn't really tell you all that much. <laughs> no, it, uh, it tells a lot like in between the lines, like an iceberg, you know? Uh, it didn't, like not the usual like pattern that people would give like, I don't know, I'm a UC fighter or I lift weights or whatever. It says more about your intent, you know, your personality behind it. And But yeah, uh, like chiming in what you said, it's then a huge honor. I, For me, I, with these podcasts, I was just trying to get one, you know, one a week or something or two weeks or whatever. I didn't know it was going to have like uh, this kind of uh, symbolic meaning behind it. But it's pretty cool to, to fulfill that function because I was like, oh, your podcast, you know, like three years ago. Uh, and most people then didn't know me then, but now I, since I passed the K mark, you know, uh, then I become more notorious for certain things or whatever. So it's good to facilitate now for you what you had once done for me. That's fucking cool. Yeah. It is cool, man. It's uh, I find more and more in my life that that's how things go. That just there's a there's an opportunity to bring something about for somebody in a way that means something to them. Yeah. And when you need an opportunity for somebody to offer you something that helps to add meaning to your life, mm -hmm. the people who you stepped up for are the most likely to step up for you. And here yeah. you are. 
yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, it's like a synchronicity, you know, as well. Uh, things that happen coincidental but have tied meaning to each other, like uh, Carl Gustav Jung would say, you know. Sure, you know, I think a lot about that, about uh, the zeitgeist, about, uh, mm -hmm. I often say synchronicity is a sign of the times. Oh, yeah. I actually don't explain what I mean by that, and I, I won't too much here, but what I, a little bit of what I mean by that is that there's a lot of action in the world these days of all kinds, and I, I, I think of synchronicity, and I, and I look out at the world and see it, and I think it as a chart of uh, like a, the culmination of some consequences Mm -hmm. different confluences of energy coming together and it's like look man you're over here and I'm over here but we are on a trajectory that means that we're going to meet somewhere that's very surprising and unexpected but makes yeah. perfect sense as soon as you see it and I see that all across my life and all across the world these days and that's, that's kind of what I mean is like there's significance to being alive right now yeah what you do matters yeah, but how do you then explain that why these like why is it specifically a sign of the times like why would it not happen then maybe five years from now or maybe in the past, that specific aspect? How do you see that? I think it's the same as Moore's Law in a certain sense. Uh, that mm -hmm. this, the, the, the volume of interaction across the planet has escalated so oh. rapidly and so intensely that now you can see it happening. And so in five years from now, what looks like a synchronicity now is going to look like the status quo. Maybe not in five years, maybe in ten, something like that. But it's, yeah. it's like a, it's like a, it's like the impending paradigm shift is making itself known. It's there's, if you have an, a paradigm shift, mm -hmm. you have one state and you have another state, but in yeah. between those states is turbulence and chaos because stuff has to get broken down and be destroyed to be put back together into this new state. And so there's this oscillation because the homeostatic uh, nature of existence says, mm -hmm. I want to stay in this other paradigm. But yeah. the people in the planet are like, no, man, we're going this way. Yeah. And whatever way we choose to go, and it's like, it's coming. And whatever's coming, there's stuff in here that's going to be intense. And that's yeah. kind of what I'm seeing. Yeah. It almost reminds me, like, for example, what you said, it's about the the volume of interactions, specifically these platforms that we're on, Twitter, whatever, all these socials, it's like um, like a ball of like um, like atoms shooting at each other. All these people are little atoms, but because of the sheer volume that you said, they can hit with each other now. That would make very much sense why I get to meet actually the people that I always wanted to meet as a younger kid. I cannot give too much information about some people, but for example, now in the time when you see some like ex-veterans, you know, from from uh, the U.S. Army or Marine or something. I said, yo, I, I always wanted to meet these type of people. How, you know, I just saw them on the movie, basically, you know? And I was like, oh, this is really strange. Oh, this is really strange. But it's ridiculous how much magic is going on in Twitter in, yeah, basically behind the screens, the DMs, they say, and where these things get created together. Absolutely. And, you know, we were talking a little bit before we started recording about just, <clears throat> pardon me, we were talking about how you know, I had this podcast and, and suddenly mm -hmm. there were people I had known all my life and were, was interested in who, who came to talk to me. Yeah. And, and that's, it's very strange. It used to be the case and, and, you know, the kids maybe in their 20s right now, they don't, they really don't understand what I'm about to talk about. And the people who are older than me are still kind of chuckling at my perspective. Of, but like I, you know, I, I read the Dilbert comic for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Scott Adams was just a person who was out there. He was just yeah. like a person who existed, and I liked his comics. Yeah. And I heard him on Joe Rogan once upon a time a while back, you know, and he was talking yeah. about politics and Trump yeah. and, and persuasion. I was like, what the hell? I had no idea this guy was this interesting. Yeah. And then a couple years later, you know, he just comes to have a conversation with me about war and we're talking about drone strikes by billionaires dropping bombs on Mexico mm -hmm. and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. And you know, he's like, I'm a fuck China up. <laughs> and and I, you know, I, I'm very conscious at, yeah. the, at the time I'm talking to him that how surreal of an experience this is in any other time. You know, yeah. I'm just some dude. I'm a smart guy, but I'm a weird guy and I'm not very likable in my day-to-day -day life. I mean, yeah. we can have a conversation and I can be likable for an hour. Yeah. Try knowing me for try knowing me for any length of time, and I, 
am not a very likable guy. Yeah, the yeah, same yeah. stuff I do on Twitter. Yeah. You know, don't be a weak bitch. I say that to people to their face when they're yeah. being a weak bitch, and they don't like me. <laughs> I yelled at a kid at work yesterday. I'm like, dude, I need you to work harder. You're not working hard. And even if you're not going to work hard, I need you to be efficient with your time. Yeah. You're not being efficient. If it takes you two minutes to walk across the shop and back, maybe you should just wheel the shit down to the other end so that you can actually help me out because I got a lot to do here, man. And you know what he did? Oh, all right, I'll just mope around the rest of the day. It's like, okay, well, I guess we're not going to be friends. Dang it. There goes another person who I said the truth to and they didn't <laughs> like me anymore. <laughs> and, and I don't care. Yeah. My family loves me. I yeah. have a couple of friends I've had my whole life, and they love me, and I love them back, and yeah. I love people, but I have been to hell, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not taking any steps back if I can avoid it, and that yeah. includes your bad attitude, man, you know, so I guess the point is, to, to sum this little bit up, is this, this ability for somebody like me mm -hmm. to have an exchange with basically anybody out there, mm -hmm. and to be... Uh, you know, respected and mm -hmm. given an hour or two hours of somebody's time, yeah. even if they're not a famous person. I mean, you're on the other side of the world for me, man. Yeah. Yeah. And we get to have this conversation, and you're an interesting guy and smart and funny. I like you, you know? Yeah. And we couldn't have done this 10 years ago. We, no. we couldn't have even thought of doing this 50 years ago, and we would have been like uh, trying not to die from working 18 hours in a coal yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah, in a coal mine. So it's, it's, <coughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Uh, to what I also like sometimes from a meta point of view or breaking the fourth wall, what I want to give to the youngsters is that there's no time like this to talk basically to influential people, basically. That's what you're sketching also. I think Benjamin, uh, the Spanish Benjamin, he said it like, okay. there's no time like this you can interact with them. You can learn from them. If you're uh, coachable, learnable, you can slide in the DMs. Some might even fucking react and you might get opportunities or whatever. You're really close to them. They will give you the time of day if you have something in exchange, like if you build your, um, you know, your platform or your social media, whatever. Whereas if you go to a company, they'll look at you, who the fuck are you? That still exists a little bit, that archaic system. Um, so that's definitely an opportunity, like the youngsters, they should definitely benefit. Uh, try to build something, you know, and then maybe two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you will reap something of it that you did not expect. Yeah, and just to build on that a little bit, because there's a trap in there. There's a really mm -hmm. uh, significant trap. And the trap is that, that you think that, uh, <laughs> to use a very funny example from uh, like dorky right-wing America, mm -hmm. some people will have in their Twitter bio, it says, I was once retweeted by General Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, cool, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but... Here's the thing that makes me different from most people on social yeah. media mm -hmm. is I don't care about your notoriety in the sense that that's no barrier of entry for me to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. you if you like, I, I, I always say that uh, mm -hmm. like politics is for retards. And, and I don't mean that in a Down syndrome way. I mean, there's some sort of emotional or mental arrested development that draws you into politics because you know it's a scam. And, and every four years, you know, I find out I'm a retard. It's just like, damn it, man, I get drawn in. But but the thing <laughs> is, even though that's the case, even though I know it's foolish and I get all riled up and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting mad at the circus. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting mad at PT Barnum. It's like, well, I should have known better. Yeah. But I reach out to some of these people in politics and I talk to them one on one. Mm -hmm. And now I have connections. I have phone numbers. I have. Te I'll reach out. There's a there's a world event. I reach out to my guy in Washington. I reach out to my guy in Europe. I reach out to my guy in the intelligence or security. You know. And I'm like, yeah. hey, what is going on with this? Yeah. And they text back in two minutes and they say, this is what I know. This is what you can't tell people. Yeah. You know. And I, okay, no problem. Yeah. And you can do that with anything that you want. You can talk to the expert, sure. And if you have at least, like, sometimes all it takes is you say, hey, man, I'd like to have a conversation with you. I'll buy your book and read it. Can I yeah. talk to you after? And I go, I would love that. Yeah. And, and then you have this connection forever sometimes. Sometimes not. Sometimes it's an hour and you're done. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's forever, though. Now I have friends because of it. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take it to the next step. Don't just let it be the timeline. Don't just let it be you got once retweeted by General Flynn. Talk to General Flynn. 
become his friend. Yeah. And then you have a person yeah. who matters to the world. Yeah. Who thinks you matter, and you can talk to them. Exactly. Uh, like what you're talking about, like scaling it up, basically. Because mm, I think it, it comes a little bit from self worth. If I want to share a little bit from myself, like a couple years on the timeline, I was like a rookie. And, but then in the meantime, I built myself in the offline world, like Benjamin talks about a lot, that the value is not the same. It, you have to come with that idea. Yeah, you have, to build, you have to build yourself. You have to build yourself up. But then uh, at one point, uh, during certain exchanges, you're going to have to deliver something. Or it feels that you have to give something of exchange. And then these people stick with you. And, if, and very ironically or almost... You can't say it. It's like, almost like, what what do you see in me? Or something like that. That's like maybe an old thought of yourself, of your old life. You should not ever verbalize that, but it's good to be aware of it. Like, why am I saying this? That means you see yourself in a certain point of view that the other person doesn't see. So just live up to what the projection of his is and keep building yourself. And you have a very tangible relationship that you can leverage for money, power, uh, connections just to go to a uh, wicked cool party just get invited you know and from here you can get the the formula that i mentioned people don't understand this that this is very much possible sure and there's a flip side to the coin that you just mentioned mm -hmm. feedback is very important and if you i mean you can actually just overtly ask what you know what do you see in, yeah, for sure. But you can be subtle about it too, but that's sort of not very valuable unless you have an image of yourself in here that you're trying to be, and then the feedback lets you know, am I on the right track? Okay. And one of the things I talk to people a lot about, one of the most important messages I feel like I have is you're supposed to imagine the highest good that you can imagine. You're supposed to imagine the most perfect being that you can imagine. Have a vision of it in your head. If you don't have a visual part of your brain, which is, you know, one in a hundred or something, can't visualize, that's okay. You use the tools that you have to compose some sort of template of perfection. Mm -hmm. And it should look like you. And you should move towards that image. That's the point of your life. That's what I teach people is personal sacred practice. God will talk right to you. He'll talk to you. Or whatever it is that essence i call it god i like the word and i think of it as a conscious person you don't have to but whatever is that essence that is the benevolent force in the world the creative force in the world imagine what it looks like and imagine it looks like you and imagine that you act exactly like you would imagine that thing would act and then that feedback becomes very valuable at that point because you go i'm trying to be on the path to perfection let me talk to you you send me a message and i measure it and honesty and sort of a meta perception of the conversations that you're having where I'm having a conversation with you but I'm also perceptive of myself experiencing mm -hmm. this and I'm also thinking about the person over here who's listening to both of us and that's why I will often say all right I'm winding up this rant but let me finally get to the point and so I'm gonna wind up this rant let me find get to the point here is mm -hmm. you have to have something you're shooting for and then you have to latch on to as many levels of awareness as you can so that yeah. you can actually pay attention to whether or not you're moving towards that thing or you're just fucking lying to yourself because if it's the second you're going in the opposite direction and by the time you realize it you're gonna have a really hard time turning around and facing all the shit that you lied about and did wrong because you were pretending you were somebody you were not that's really powerful uh, I heard, like you mentioned, the concept personal sacred presence. What do you mean by that? Practice. Practice personal. Yeah. What is it? what is that? Is it like a form of yeah, like a, an awareness or like a presence that you're in the moment? Or how how would you describe that? I'm uh, I'm pondering. I think I'll just give a like a. A brief answer and if you feel inclined to peel into the onion we can do that essentially I'm of the faith that a person is supposed to have a connection with the divine and mm -hmm. it's individual but that it's 
all important. Personal sacred practice is the art of making every thought, action, and moment in your life mm -hmm. sacred. It's, it's supposed to be in service to the divine. That's what I mean by sacred. Okay. It is in service and connected to the divine. And so a person, and this is pretty hard to argue if you think about it, a person's life meaning is derived from the extent to which they accomplish that. Yeah. And it's not always in the moment that you're capable of practicing it. Sometimes you have to reflect. For example, yeah. I talked early on about having a dark life. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of things that I would not do again. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of things that were wishing a useful tool I wish I wouldn't have done. But I can't go back and change them. I've lived the life I lived, and I got the weight on my shoulders that I got to carry forever. My goal, you know, my, my uh, like, part of my purpose now is becoming a man strong enough to carry it and mm -hmm. worthy enough to carry on. Mm -hmm. And so I have to look back on those things and go, where did I go wrong? What are the lessons? And how can I put something into the world that will help mitigate myself and everybody that I care about from making similar mistakes in the future? Yeah. That's how I turn my darkness into light. It's like I learned and I went yeah. to war with myself. And when I came back out, I had a lot of things to teach. So now let's get to work teaching. Yeah. I really like how you said like uh, part of that uh, sacred practice is to make basically your day-to-day -day life sacred in every thought, action, and moment. That's really like a very uh, strong intent. Like they like to talk about those things in Buddhism and Zen and stuff like that. That uh, if you're walking, you're walking. Uh, if you're talking, you're talking. Uh, when you're drinking, you're drinking. It's quite this, you make it special, you know? It reminds me how with some people you can just have like a, a, a mini celebration, a small win, and you can make it feel real big. Whereas if you're at a certain party with other types of people, it's like you're trying to celebrate, but the vibe is not there. Nobody's feeling it. And it definitely depends on like where you're coming from then, what your, yeah, basically how you're going to perceive this, what, how, how much meaning you're going to put on this, how sacred and special are you going to make this? That's really fascinating to hear. There's a, you know, like I mentioned before, I'm from Utah. I grew up going to the Mormon church mm. and I feel like everybody in the world almost misunderstands what that church is about and that they misunderstand the guy who made it and the church that he was making and the purpose behind it mm -hmm. i feel like what i just talked about this personal sacred practice mm -hmm. i feel like i i have come to be a prophet in a certain sense to to reinvigorate the mormon church to be mm -hmm. what it was supposed to be which is that and, and i'll tell you I don't want to get too deep into it just because I'm trying to be respectful for the people around me because I care about my community. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a ceremony in the temple, mm -hmm. the Mormon church, and you stand between two mirrors, okay? And when you stand between two mirrors, what do you realize? That you are the infinite being that you've been praying to. You are eternal. There's this really, really interesting talk that Joseph Smith gave at the funeral of one of his friends who had died in a, like a mining accident. And he unveils this theory that they now call the Adam-God theory or the Adam-God principle. And essentially what he says is, in the pre-existence, God the Eternal Father and the rest of us we're a council of gods. We are the same as God, the Eternal Father. And he was elected to go first because mm -hmm. he was the most intelligent intelligence. And he went to set the pattern. And the pattern is you become an atom. You, you rise up from the clay into a body. Yeah. You live a life. You die. You are resurrected into a perfected form. And you elevate to the next throne. And somebody yeah. comes to take the place. And that is perpetual because he's the most intelligent and perfect consciousness. He went first and we're supposed to follow. And that on um, this planet, <laughs> the Archangel Michael mm -hmm. is actually the Adam of this planet. And now he is like an advocate or a gatekeeper for us to move from this planet into another planet to become our own Adam. Yeah. To, to live a life 
and to be resurrected as a god perfected and to vacate the throne for the next person to take it and yeah. and that's you know, it's like whoa cool but one thing he said in that talk he said if you have an eternal soul you have always had an eternal soul it is forever it is yeah. undying you yeah. have always been who you are if you believe that you have an eternal soul then there's time is irrelevant you exist and mm -hmm. because you are an eternal consciousness mm -hmm. you have eternal opportunity for perfection you are a god yeah act like it and that's what i'm trying to say to people it's like i don't care if you believe that some days i don't like i don't jive with that because mm -hmm. i know i'm flawed on this planet mm -hmm. but that doesn't really have anything to do with the message the message is act as if yes you can become perfect mm -hmm. because if you don't believe you can you're never going to move towards it that's the point is move towards your idea of perfection and be humble and honest enough to take the feedback like we talked about earlier to check yourself and see how you're doing yeah but have compassion with yourself to make sure if you fail at something or you make a mistake that you don't let the whole edifice crumble okay yeah i i want to chime in there it reminds me a lot of like what i read about spirituality uh, especially that if you if you believe in a soul then uh, maybe this flawed logic, but then, you know, you can believe in eternity and that eternal conscious. And once you can tap into that, then you can strive towards perfection and basically get all these, like what you, like the highest goods. And then you, what happens then for me, then at least like you lose sense of time, you get insane joy, uh, like about the most stupid shit, like uh, the food that you're eating is really the lit the light becomes brighter. That's like a sign for me always. Like it so sounds so almost like Disney, but the light becomes quite bright. You, uh, after like a meditation session or a prayer session, depending on what kind of person you are, the light is so bright and like there's this sparkle in life really. Like the, the sounds are crisper and stuff like that. But I want to like give like basically a tangent because uh, actually like I was raised like an atheist uh, even though I'm Roman Catholic, but that's beside the point. But I'm trying to sketch a person, an avatar, somebody who's listening. And he comes into this conversation and he's thinking, okay, I I just want, like, a very bland person. I just want to make money, get the bitches, get stronger. What does this have to do with me, one? And secondly, um, if I'm interested in it, how do I tap into this, like, what would you say to this person? <laughs> well, number one, I would say the kind of person that you are determines the kind of people that are in your life. Mm -hmm. And you're influenced by them, obviously, but you influence them. And there is, there is attraction on a lot of levels. For example, like, I know this is a bit like gratuitous and stuff, but I have strong shoulders. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good can, shoulder, man. Yeah. I can military press. My one rep max on a barbell military press, strict, is yeah. 250 pounds. <laughs> Shit, that's good. There's there's not very many people in the world who have ever done that. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not like I'm not the world's strongest man or anything. I mean, yeah. you know, don't get me wrong, but I'm very strong, mm -hmm. and that's attractive to both men and women. Mm -hmm. The fact that I'm jacked and lean and relatively handsome mm -hmm. that determines the quality of the people coming into my life mm -hmm. the quality yep. of the people coming into your life whether it's for financial gain or for romantic interest or whatever my wife is beautiful undeniably beautiful and she's strong and fit and she got straight A's all through school mm -hmm. and she comes from a well-to-do family and mm -hmm. she traveled all over the world winning piano competitions and classical piano mm -hmm. it's I had standards for myself, even when I was a piece of shit, uh -huh. I had standards for who I wanted to spend my time with, and especially when I was coming out of that, yeah. I met my wife, and she saw something in me, and I definitely saw something in her, and, you know, I tell people all the time, like, my spikes of intelligence and capacity are way higher than a lot of people, most people, but yeah. my dips are down low, I'm, I'm a genius for real on some things, and I'm literally mentally retarded on other stuff. Yeah. I know it's kind of jokey, and it's funny to me even, but it's true. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have, like, good emotional... Uh, I either have no emotions, kind of, or I have all the emotions. Yeah, yeah. It's Reminds me a little bit by myself, by the way. I, uh, yeah. You have what I have then, at least, how you sketched it, in a more extreme way. 
and I find it a little bit sucky what I have because yeah, it's hard to yeah blend in then a little bit. But yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's it's good. The the point is to to sum it up for the bland guy who doesn't want to hear me run off. The point is. If you make yourself excellent according to your own standards, you will attract people who find your standards of excellence attractive, and they will be in alignment with you at least on those points. And if you can work with people on the things that matter to you, that matter to them, there's a synergy. There's a gestalt that happens when your passion and another person's passion meets. And if you're willing, the Tate brothers are a great example of this that I'm trying always to explain to people. It's like, look, man, no. I don't agree with everything that they do, and I'm not in alignment with all the pieces of their morality. You mm -hmm. know what I am in alignment with? Living your life by principles, doing what you believe in regardless of what the world tells you, and leveraging the strength that you have to enhance the kind of life that you want to live. Yeah. If I had a billion dollars, I would not have 15 supercars. I wouldn't have one supercar. I don't care about supercars. I don't. And if I had a billion dollars, I'd be married to the same woman I am. She's mm -hmm. the greatest person in the world to me. She's my soulmate. I truly believe that she and I were meant to be together and we have kids and we have love and we have understanding. I would never forsake that. I would I would, you know, own a million acres and I would terraform the world and I would teach people how they're being so dumb. Like why do you have why do you have five acres of grass when you could have a food forest to feed your whole community, you stupid. Yeah. You wonder why we're having problems, it's because you're a fucking idiot. That's why. So if you want to be powerful or rich or have 20 chicks or 20 supercars or a thousand acres or whatever you want, focus on those things, work towards those things, have faith that you can reach them and be so pinpoint dedicated to those things that other people who want similar things, they can't help but notice, this guy's going the place that I want to go, let's work together. And yeah. if people are there, I'll tell you what, man, people who are above you, they always want to lift you up if yeah. you're willing to do the work. And they don't want anything to do with you if you're a lazy bastard. So if you can prove that you're willing to do the work and to be tenacious, mm -hmm. there's always a hand coming down. It's like, yeah, man, look at this new place that you can come to. Yeah, and yeah. They lift you up and you go, it's a new world, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, uh, that reminds me, uh, the, the first couple of tweets or interactions, you know, that that's what I sketched, that, that ladder, that, that hand movement from reaching upwards, downwards, like, uh, you had like 2,000 followers, I had like 100 or something, and I said something, and you were like, uh, uh, there will always be a hand reaching out from above. That's what you're sketching. So uh, this is like living proof of it, like in a, in a microcosm, you know? And, and and what is cool about, about, you know, this meta connection that we have in this conversation just between us as friends is, and to bring it back to the start of the conversation, you know, I did that for you. You've done that for me. Uh, when I see that you have put out a book, man, I can't wait to just like retweet it and, and prop you up and tell people you're interesting and awesome and they should read it because you're an interesting, awesome guy. Yeah, and, thanks. You know, I think people should support you. I love supporting the people who I think are interesting and valuable. And when I do that, it develops goodwill. It's like... <laughs> This is the thing that's so strange to me. It's like I'm an autistic guy who has mm -hmm. a really hard time making friends because I'm just very blunt and I say whatever. And and I'm willing to admit I'm wrong, but you're not. And that's why we're not friends, you know? But, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point of that is just to say um, there's there are there are just very simple rules to most of this stuff. If you want to be successful, it's like there's five things to do. And if you just do those five things, the only thing that can come between you and the destiny you're dreaming of is calamity. You know, just something that's that you can't like. If you're driving and you're obeying the speed limit and you uh, sit at the green light for one second before you hit the gas and then you enter the intersection and you get t-boned to death, that's you know what are you gonna do? You're obeying the traffic laws. You even hesitate a little bit to make sure nobody is running through the intersection. Yeah. And then you started on and somebody came 100 miles an hour and ended your life. Yeah. Okay. You know, sorry, man, but if if before that time mm -hmm. you had picked five things to do consistently every day, you would have been making progress on those five things. Yeah. And if you had the faith to stick to it, even though sometimes the evidence of your success is not immediately forthcoming, if you mm -hmm. had faith, if you had belief in yourself and belief in the principles that you were adhering to, yeah. 
you would have been making progress right up until the point where destiny decided that you are no longer a member of the citizens of this planet. Yeah. Usually that doesn't happen to people. You know, if you if you live a good life, usually you live a long one. Yeah, yeah. I I, I completely got your answer about the, the the perfecting oneself, but I didn't quite catch like how would the soul play a part in that? Uh, like specifically for the atheist, how would they? Like it was a perfect advice actually that you gave to a person. It was quite uplifting, but how would the soul like play a part in it? Can you sketch that a little bit in like? Because I heard like um, align yourself with perfection. There it would might come in where the soul might play a part, but I'm not seeing it clearly. I'm gonna do something that I'm not very good at, which is steel manning a perspective that isn't mine. Mm -hmm. Let me just do this. Okay. Okay. There's no soul. There isn't one. Nevertheless, there is a distinct you-ness. You have a personality. Right? And whether it's the culmination of uh, genetics and epigenetics and environment and the choices that you've made, or maybe it's not even choice, maybe there's no free will. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's you just uh, having this subjective experience of something that's just unfolding and there's nothing that you can do. Mm -hmm. But it does seem to be the case, and it's very difficult to, um, even if it is not the case, our, our perception is that the way that you think affects the way that you act and the way that you act affects the outcome of your life mm -hmm. yeah for sure and it seems like if you can't hold that perspective in your head uh, it's like what's the point man you know like <laughs> if you if you don't think you can change or impact things then uh, i don't i don't know what to tell you really and i don't i don't i don't care to try to talk you out of that perspective it's yeah. just uh it's so self-defeating and dumb even if it's true it's dumb and, the, and if it's true then the universe is real dumb but yeah, I'm not going to hold one. that perspective. And look, I'm I'm choosing not to hold that perspective. Well, well, well. Okay, but so, okay. There's no soul. There's a distinct unis, and if you don't like it, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, you can still have personal sacred practice. If, yeah, if you believe that you are capable of making choices, and that there's a difference in the quality of your life based on those choices, you just focus in the moment mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, on making the choices that enhance your sense of your own value and whatever that means to you and and this is another thing i'm big on it's like i don't want to tell you who to be yeah, i have for sure. my sense of right and wrong but i mm -hmm. want you to figure it out for yourself you're not yeah, me for sure. i'm not you well figure it out and then go for it you know yeah, and if yeah. we're enemies then we'll go to war and may the last man standing be correct i don't know but mm -hmm. until then i don't want to tell you what to do if you come yeah. into my house i'm going to kill you if you threaten to hurt my family, I'm going to kill you. If you threaten my life, my life's more valuable than the one who's trying to take it from me. I'm going to yeah. kill you. Other than that, we might just have a disagreement, and that's yeah. fine because we yeah. can still have a disagreement and move on. Uh, and, and so that's that's the that's the thing, yeah. you know. Uh, don't do something that's going to get you killed. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to kill them first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. No, but thanks. I, I think I got a chance. Especially, I liked how how you said everybody has at least. A sense of belief in unus, in the uniqueness, and that they can make a choice. You know, that's all a person needs to hear. Then, you know, uh, stripped away from all kinds of like concept they can't even begin to comprehend. It's more about, yeah, where are you gonna make a choice? That's very powerful. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit what really interests me about. Uh, you said uh, something like along the lines like if you're lying to yourself, and that other people can provide like feedback to yourself. And they provide like a mirror almost. That's really fascinating because uh, it it for me it connects a little bit what you said like synchronicities are of the time. It, it, like when you're on the right path, something happens. Like uh, somebody, I don't know. You get like a free thing. Uh, that's like the first sign, something for free or something. And then somebody helps you and stuff like that. And you're like, hey, wait, this is really interesting. This is really interesting. And uh, the more you are in tune with it, the more you tap into it. You're gonna get straight up lucky and yeah? like straight up the success that we're talking about. Uh, yeah, what is that? That that mirror thing that people provide feedback. Like, do you have to be? Do you have to open your heart, or what? What is that? Do you think? I'll answer that in just one second. But I had a line occur to me while you were talking. Sure, do it. Because you said the first one's free. You know, it's almost like your destiny is a drug dealer. <laughs> it's like, here's here's this first one. You come on back when you're ready to pay for more. I'll give you a good deal. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's a good. That, that's a tweet. That's a tweet. Good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. So to answer your question, um, I talked about two mirrors earlier, mm -hmm. and you're standing yep. between it. Let's let's apply that to this situation. If other sure. people are a mirror upon which you reflect and see an image of yourself, yeah. The other mirror that you're standing between, in that sense, is your own self-image in here. Mm -hmm. How you think of yourself. Yeah. And it's it's more accurate in certain regards than mm -hmm. the image that's reflecting from somebody else could ever be, because they don't. It's like a it's like a an obscured lens on both ends and they reveal different portions of who you are yeah and this person standing between the mirrors in the moment yeah this person is the ac accurate representation of who you are mm -hmm. who you are right now is who you actually are what you're doing right now is who you actually are but it's not who you were and it's not who you're going to be and if you want to have some intention if you want to move with intention you have to move within boundaries and you have to see whether or not the boundaries that you have set for yourself are in alignment with the boundaries of what you view as the thing that you're trying to become because it's yeah. not always in alignment there's there's some phase happening and and the reflection from other people and the self reflection provide valuable feedback for you yeah. to be able to see how closely in alignment those two things are yeah definitely that feedback aspect that you just mentioned um, I remember when I was younger, I couldn't take feedback for shit. Um, much less, how how are you gonna take feedback from destiny? You know, if you don't listen. So, yeah, that reminds me of a little bit what you said. When, uh, when you're fasting, uh, like yesterday, I had a fasting tweet. Or when you're really silent, then God then can talk to you or something like that. It reminds me of something like that. Yeah, this is an important point. Your life is so full of momentum. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's okay that that's the case. Momentum is a viable tool. But the, the issues arise when the momentum is carrying you in a direction that you didn't want to go. And yes, definitely. It eventually always will, right? Uh, you know, uh, because, because of that lack of perfect alignment, yes. no matter what, it's going to take you, even if it's one degree off course. You know, Tony Robbins talks about if you, if you turn a boat one degree off course, eventually you end up miles away from where you would have been. It's like, yeah, well, that's true for heaven as well as hell, right? Yeah. Um, you might not, you might not understand exactly what heaven looks like, mm -hmm. and you might not ever find out, but you can get close. But hell, even people like, even atheists, even people who are not religious, mm -hmm. they all believe in evil because it's yeah, yeah. easy to see. Like yes. if somebody's, you know, like murdering people and raping women and, and diddling kids it's like well yeah that's evil it's it's pretty it's pretty uh like cut and dry there's yeah. no there's no like if you just go out and kill random people and rape kids it's like that's evil it's clearly evil yeah. nobody's arguing that yeah. you know uh you can see hell easily and you've lived in it you know if you're miserable you're living in hell everything looks miserable yeah everybody's an obstacle every action is a hassle every yeah. choice is a burden yeah but if you are vibing on the things that you love Man, it's like, I'll tell you what, I get like three to six hours of sleep in general because I love my life. I love my life. I love yeah. being alive. I want to be alive all the time. I want to, I want to, I have, I just, I love my life and I want to be in it. And if I get eight hours of sleep, I mean, look how wound up I am right now. I'm running on like four hours of sleep today yeah. and three yesterday and four before but i love my life and i'm wound up and if i get eight hours nine hours of sleep i am just like <sighs> oppressively intense yeah, yeah, yeah but i wake up early and then i have this time where i'm by myself and it helps me recharge because i'm very introverted and i need alone time mm -hmm. and i write and i do these things but you know um if you can if you can figure out some of these things about yourself and that's the feedback aspect is like I have learned that I need alone time big time or I turn into a grumpy asshole and it doesn't it takes one day if I don't have an hour to myself in in a day I'm not a very pleasant person to be around yeah because yeah. it's taxing on me to, to, to be socially active mm -hmm. it is it's, it's like it drains me I could I could work all I could work 20 hours straight 
of hard physical labor and I would yep. feel tired but I wouldn't feel exhausted if I have a conversation uh, with like more than two people in the room yeah I'm like oh man I need a nap time right now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you I feel you're one other than that man like <laughs> uh, like uh, sometimes like oh why is fury so quiet why is he so silent uh, why why are these people hanging with him I thought he was interesting you know but as soon as people like multiply in the room I'm like yo just smoking in the room or drinking I'm like yo fuck this shit uh, almost like when you uh, uh, drop the controller you know like fuck this shit like <laughs> so, I, I got lost in the weeds but to bring it back to what you asked me the faster yeah, sure. thing that, that's what this is all about is look when you you have to eat to live yeah it's necessary but you don't have to eat every day to live but yeah. your like homeostatic impulse tells you that you do yeah if you leave it behind for a day two days a week longer suddenly the momentum of your life comes to a screeching halt and it happens for me right around day three Okay. I'm in day three, and I was very hungry day one. I was very yeah. hungry day two. Day three, the hunger just kind of is like, uh, I guess you're not going to eat. Yeah. We'll let it go. Yeah, and yeah. when that voice inside of your head that says, eat chance, eat chance, when it goes away, mm -hmm. then all the other voices that have been echoing around, they seem silly. Yeah, you know, yeah. Wait a minute. I don't have to say yes to you. I'm saying no to food for a week. Yeah. I'm on day six, you know, and, and you enter, it's... It's remarkable, and there's a reason that it has been a part of essentially every religious tradition throughout yeah. history. It's because when you take that time to silence those inner voices, you are revealed to yourself with much greater clarity, and when the momentum stops, you choose what you're going to do. And when you come back into it, it's like, okay, I haven't eaten in seven days. What am I going to eat now? And you, yeah. you, you're like, I'm going to have a steak. And you make a steak. And then you cut into it and you go, man, that smells great. <laughs> and you look at yeah. it and you're like, this is a perfectly, this is like right on the border between rare and, and medium rare. It's like right in there. There's some blood. Man, and then, you, and then you bite it. And you're feeling the texture. And you're really yeah. savoring the taste. And your salivary glands, it's like, I've been, Come on, man, I've been waiting for this. And you taste yeah. it, and you chew it, and you take your time with that first bite, and you let the flavors unfurl like a nice glass of wine. And, and you go, that was so good. Yeah. And you could have had the same steak a week before and been like, I like steak. That was good. Cool. Back to yeah. life. And, and exactly. This is, this is what I'm trying to develop in my life, just to, to steal a little bit more of the time, is that... Mm -hmm. Sure, go ahead. I like to lift weights, I like to lift rocks, I like to go on hikes, but I'm not going to be able to do that with the same intensity if I'm 70 or 80. But I want to develop some things that I can do forever that give me a sense of, uh, like, the blood, you know, the uh, the joie de vivre, the, mm -hmm. the intensity of experience. And so yes. I, I've been developing my palate, you know, and I've been tasting wine, and I'll smell it, and I'll think about what I'm smelling, and I'll taste it, and I'll sit back, and yeah, I'll... Man. And it's like, okay. And I find myself doing that with my food. I yeah, find myself yeah. treating my experiences like that. It's like, what really am I experiencing right now? And yeah. and then I get into the history, you know, like I think about drinking a bourbon or a scotch. And it's like, there are rules to this. There's a tradition to this. It comes from a place, like a French wine. It's the earth. It's the hundreds of year old vines. It's the culture. It's the people who made it. What is the story here? And then you taste it and you go, I can taste this story. I can experience Yes. Things on such a larger, like a, such a wider level and a deeper depth and a yes. greater intensity because I'm taking the time to pay attention right now to what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of that Faulkner line. Um, Distillation is civilization. Uh, just in one glass, you sketched civilization. Also, like props to props to your hyperverbosity, gents. Like I always notice that in your tweets and like in the discourses that we have, uh, I noted again, like such vocabulary you have, it's, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really good. <laughs> no, but uh, to chime in into that, like what you said with the fasting and the steak, it, uh, to tie it back to that personal sacred practice, basically, because what you were just describing was like, you're so into it and 
I know exactly what you mean because I've done uh, insane fastings. Uh, like I ran insane distance just to, to break myself, to, sh to strip away and then to come back to comfort and what you're describing, like giving to your senses as well. And yeah, a little bit like I want to share like what you said with the, the wine tasting that you do. Like now I'm like seeing this girl and we drink a lot of like scotch whiskey and we do these things as well. And uh, I'm like a notorious like cigar smoker. And I brought these things with me just as part of me. But I said, hey, you want to try it? And her palate was really well refined with like wine, uh, wine stuff. She has like a certification and stuff like that. And the second she took like a hit of the cigar. Uh, she was like, yo, there's definitely uh, chocolate, coffee, almond, blah, blah, like a fuck ton. And I was like, not uh, this can be. I'm not one of those persons per se, but I was like, why do you know this? And then she told me about that certification, you know, then I thought, wait a fucking minute. So you're telling me I was like, not chain smoking, but I had this like bulk of cigars that I was just like, yeah, man, pretty good cigar, you know. And now I legit <laughs> feel sorry for people. I see them purchase the same one as me and they're like, your fury i can't taste what you're tasting because i drop these like at like a group i drop all these reviews and it's like crazy notes that i'm tasting and i um compared with reviews online of course you know like so i know where i'm at ballpark and but so i'm having with each like stoke like this like um like a mini story with myself like it legit uh, like 60 minutes oh now it's really strong now it's really soft um the coffee taste disappears it's a little bit spicier i taste black pepper I taste this flower, it's crazy, just because I take the time. And then what you just said, it's really beautiful because I try to then uh, take it from note to note, like you once said to me, like you take this note of information to another world. You can take it with food, wine, uh, and basically like observing life and shit like that. And it's just this, yeah, explosion of vitality, man. It's fucking ridiculous. So cheers to that. <laughs> that's That's kind of, that's kind of what I'm getting at here in a lot of yeah. ways is have you ever seen the movie Sideways? Who plays in that? I, I don't know. Um, Go on. There are these two guys who are going yeah. to Napa Valley for mm -hmm. wine tasting before one of them gets married. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I haven't seen that one. One of them's a wine snob. The other one's just like a party boy. Sure. And there's a great scene where they're at, they're tasting wine at this winery. And the one guy's like, mm. Ugh, that's terrible. And the other guy's just like, seems good to me, pour me another. You know, and he's just drinking the wine, and the other guy, and he's getting trashed, and the other guy's just like spitting it out, and he's like, Ugh, I will not drink fucking Merlot. You know, like, <laughs> I don't care if you sip wine and go, oh man, there's black currants and black pepper, and then it kind of rolls. Ooh, the tannins are a little bit long. I, you know, <laughs> It's like, you don't, do <laughs> you don't even have to drink wine. But if you are going to have a richness of experience in your life, yeah, beautiful. which is yeah, very richness. important to have a, 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 like a fulfilling life or to distill some meaning from your experiences, yeah. there have to be some things in your life that you treat like you're tasting fine wine. It doesn't yes. matter what it is. It's just it matters that you do it. And the more that you can do that, the more that you are acutely aware of your experience in the moment the greater the intensity and clarity and richness of the moment becomes and that it's like the difference between like uh, reading a tweet that says a thing in a platitude and it's mm -hmm, useful yeah. and sometimes sometimes the platitude gets you on the right track but it's not enough but it's the difference between reading a platitude and then reading a thousand-page novel based upon that one principle. Yes. And and you never necessarily have to make it all the way to the thousand-page novel on a single principle, but you should probably move beyond just those the one-liner, too. And wherever you fall in that, whatever in that range brings you the most satisfaction and, and gratification and happiness in your life and makes you the person most capable of being who you want to be you got to get to that level and that's for you to decide and for you to experiment and experience and and how much effort do you really want to put in some people are just lazy yeah and and okay i mean it's probably not the best but can you move beyond that obstacle mm -hmm. of laziness mm -hmm. just a little bit just a little bit 
just a little bit because if you can you're going to find that there's a lot more on the other side than you were even willing to admit to yourself when you were letting the oppressive nature of your uh, like weaknesses mm -hmm. dampen the vision of your greatness yeah i feel you uh, i uh, it really almost like a metaphor or an analogy that you use that it doesn't matter if like for example if you drink wine or whatever you know it's about that richness that acute awareness it's basically your input receptors get sharper like uh, like then you can hear like a needle in a like a, you can hear a pin dropping you know and uh, I, I legit feel sorry for some people then like i'm gonna say this like for example one of the big things in your life is gonna be like sex for example i can imagine some people like it's done or something like that but if you're not if you're not like in the moment like the fuck what the fuck are you doing then you know uh some guy on the twitter he would use the word like uh, glorified wanking that's what you're doing yeah. then you know yeah. it's you, you're not like in it you know so i'm basically like they're like big parts of your life like eating like having the sex like all these like you're gonna have and you might as well fucking be in it like enjoy it and like overwhelm yourself like bathe in it like you know to to experience these kinds of shit or else like it's, your life gonna be really bland you know it's like the equivalent like a one line of platitude or like a nice juicy book or a nice fat juicy steak or just fucking left over like fucking hard bony fatty like shit you know like it's it's that much of a difference if you make the fucking switch you know so yeah there's a there's a real uh, like salient principle that you just kind of touched on there okay which is you can turn anything into masturbation and it's I, I, I know it's a funny thing to say but it's true like you can if the if the thing that you are doing is about instant gratification ah that's masturbation yeah and and masturbation is not a creative force it's it's a destructive one mm -hmm. like if you're having if you're having sex with somebody and you don't even if you're not like if there's no interplay between you and your partner that's hollow man because the the intensity and richness of that experience when it's done with somebody instead of at somebody it's there's nothing really on the planet that can vivify your experience quite so uh, intensely and enjoyably as when you're in it with the person that you care about and you're mm -hmm. having this exchange of your essences and connecting them in a way that that's 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 what's so amazing about it is if you do that in the right way and you're doing it with somebody that you care about mm -hmm. and then suddenly a new person comes about from being in that moment with that person and it's a it's a person who is half of you and half of the person that you deeply care about mm -hmm. and it becomes a new person who you can see some of those things in but they are themselves that is a deeply richly creative act that brings about a new creator yeah you have the power in your hands you can do that or you can turn on the internet and you can pull up a video of some drug addicted girl who uh, like has been taken advantage of by these predators and you're watching essentially like a predator take advantage of a prey animal and you're like turning your creative energy and your creative focus into watching that and manifesting your creative potential onto the floor and then getting all sweaty and then going on the internet and telling people that you don't feel bad about yourself for doing it yeah you do <laughs> yeah, you do. You for sure do. <laughs> By nature, you must. Yeah, it's 100% a lie if somebody would say that they don't feel bad about it. You know, like sometimes, like I put out like these simple platitudes, and they always go viral. Like if you masturbate, you're a loser. You know, just straight up, just to trigger some people or to block people. You know, like. But then uh, you see some some like smart motherfuckers try to defend their ideology of masturbation basically in a very covert way like bro like i know what you're trying to say like i'm fucking block you i don't give a fuck man you know but yeah but well put uh, well put chance i love it how you <laughs> phrased everything <laughs> really good well uh, uh before, beforehand i had like this very cool thing that i wanted to talk about that's uniquely to you that i saw the prayer book with the mirror if you want to talk about that 
sure. I talked before about how uh, you can talk to God. Yeah. I, I do that all the time. And, you know, I I'm ambidextrous. Oh, I really? started life left handed, yeah. And and my grandma was a school teacher and my parents were divorced. I'm an only child. My dad was raised me, he had to go to work. My grandparents really stepped in and helped out with me a lot, big time. And I would be writing with my left hand and I'd be eating with my left hand and I'd be doing stuff with my left hand and my grandma part you know, she always said, uh, it's because I don't want you bumping elbows with the right handed kids in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was part of it, but it's also she was kind of superstitious about left handers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she would like I'd be writing with my left hand, she'd put the pencil in my right hand. So, and, and I look back and I was like, Grandma, you know, but but it's fine because I have this capacity now. I can write with both hands. Like I'm not as good throwing with my left hand and I'm not as good bowling with my left hand. Yeah. Uh, but but other than that, I'm pretty much across the board ambidextrous. Uh, yeah. And I read this book once called How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. Mm. Okay. Great read. Fascinating read. If, if anybody's out there listening, go check it out. It's cool. But it gives you a bunch of things that he did that made yeah. him who he was. And then it gives you exercises to try. And one of the things it talked about in there is, you know, Leonardo da Vinci was ambidextrous, but he was mostly left-handed, and he would... He would write left-handed mirror writing because then you're writing uh, in the same way that the right hand you write and it reveals the text that you can see instead of covering it up with your left hand as you're going. Yeah. It's the mirror writing is the counterpoint to the right hand writing. Yeah. And I thought, that's cool. I'm going to try it. And I tried it. I was like, oh, I, yeah, I can do this. And it, sometimes it takes a little bit, the, the like a directionally sensitive things like A's or things. You have to kind of, sometimes I imagine I'm writing it forwards and then i flip it around and i'm like oh yeah that's how i have to do that yeah 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 so you're training your new synopsis yeah and the reason that i do that when i'm writing mirror writing as i'm writing god's responses to me is because that takes you very much out of yourself out of your mm. momentum out of how you would usually do things and so it, uh, it gives the opportunity for uh, a new voice to come in because you are like your consciousness is focused on this thing that's uncomfortable for you to do and takes the focus and it sort of silences the stuff that might automatically occur if you weren't paying so close attention to the fact I'm writing this in mirror writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's just your intent that you set when you started comes to fruition is how I feel about it. And it does tend to be the case that that's how it has worked for me. And it's just a cool practice. Although I will say this, there is a very like sort of significant correlation between ambidexterity two things genius and insanity a lot of schizophrenics are ambidextrous yeah for example you can see why that would be when you're doing that you become somebody else when you switch your hand yeah yeah person. And, uh, you can, and if you don't believe me, go test it out. Go. go <coughs> Jens, left I want to chime in. You know? Yeah, I want yeah, to chime in here perfectly because uh, I asked, "Oh, are you ambidextrous?" Because I am as well. Uh, but I actually, um, funny story is why I'm like that. So, the story goes: when I was a baby, I did a lot of things with my left, but um, school teaches you to do shit with right. So, but what's really funny, for example, when I do like some boxing drills or something, I like the the southpaw style, and I have a crisper left punch but a more forceful right punch. Like I can throw in more weight with my right because I'm right-handed, but it's quite crisper with my left hand. Like, uh, but I can definitely feel what you said. It feels as if you're becoming another person. It reminds me of something that I read with uh, brush your, just do something simple, brush your teeth with your left hand, for example. What you're then doing is you're creating new neural pathways, new synapses that are not yourself or not your old self or something like that. And what you're doing basically is something called like psychological distancing, if we're going to put it in the neurochemical, neurophysiological neurophys world. And but what you just described is really cool with this spiritual practice, like you have a prayer book, but then you, yeah, you take your mind literally to somewhere else. And that's something very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely feel you with like writing with my left hand. It feels as, as if somebody else did it, you know, like, it's like, <laughs> like, 
it's it's weird for, for people out there you can just try it what i when i was a kid i would write uh so my name like fury is cool uh and when i wanted to practice my other hand i would write it you know and just try like let, let's say trying to create an alter ego for yourself or something you know give yourself a nickname and you know like uh you know johnny is cool but like uh, david is cool uh, like with two hands it will have like a, a very trippy effect that you can get a sense of what chance is sketching at i believe really cool There's a thing about me that that I suspect people share maybe more than they realize, but I'm very conscious of, which is that, and, and this is kind of touching on what I talked about before, mm -hmm. I, I experience very distinct voices and characters within me. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of the reason that I'm a very effective mimic or caricature artist, because like if I think about it, I can hear my dad right now. And I could embody my dad. You know, it's like chance, you gotta you know, it's like but but it's distinct. You know, there are there are these voices rippling around within me. And sometimes I give expression to the voices. And and I feel like if I do not give expression to these voices that are inside of me, um, there's a, there's like a mounting pressure mm -hmm. that occurs if I don't. Yeah. But part of that is just I'm a, like not I'm not exactly towing the sanity line, and and I mean that genuinely. I'm not you know I'm not exactly a stable personality, and yeah. it's an uncomfortable state to to live in. But that's why um, that's why I know that some of the things that I teach are so effective is because I'm like a borderline uh, multiple personality person mm -hmm. who has figured out how to cohese into a personality of my choosing yeah. by doing certain things and 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 because I have an outsider's perspective on everything yeah I can see other people with great clarity and I can see that they are experiencing some of the same things that I have experienced, just with less intensity. Everybody out there knows, for example, that if you're in a moral situation, a situation which presents itself as obviously morally consequential, mm -hmm. according to your own morals, you can recognize different impulses. One of them is pulling you to do the thing that is against your principles. Mm -hmm. One of them is calling for you to walk the path that you have chosen for yourself. And those calls, those flavors, those impulses, those voices are distinct from each other. It's the devil and it's the angel, right? Yeah. It's not just the devil and the angel, though. There's a lot of characters in there. And all of them are your future selves trying to convince you to become them. You should choose wisely. Yeah. That's that's beautiful what you said. Um, especially that future self. Like, uh, I can imagine then that some other people must have... Yeah, for you, it's uh, you're, you're different. But everybody has voices in them. Yeah, I didn't mean it in a bad way. But, like, everybody has selves then and choices to make, you know? Mm, but it's... I think... A part of it is, is that people are not listening, I think, now. that uh, subconsciously, they're, you said you should choose wisely. They're just going along, you know? They're, then someday, as, uh, then someday on a Sunday, they suddenly wake up and like, hey, shit, was this the person I wanted to be? And they haven't even stopped to think about it and like really narrow down, listen, listen to this voice or that voice. That's something a lot of people can, yeah, like intuitively career to you know it's really strange but yeah we gave a lot of actionable advice already yeah go ahead yeah. i just i just want to add one thing yeah and sure. we kind of already talked about it earlier and i kind of already talked about it, but i want to concretize and crystallize it which is sure momentum is how you travel but it momentum is blind you need to interrupt your momentum 
from time to time. And the best way to do that is through a crucible. Mm. Something that breaks you. You need to find your limits. And you shouldn't do it every day. It's not a crucible a day. I mean, it's do something hard every day for sure. Like like my friend Dennis Michael Hines says, do hard things. Mm. And there's another, there's another, you know, like a uh, gray wave guy who's just jacked and badass and it's undeniable it's like okay i could listen to this guy he's undeniably wise <laughs> yeah yeah i love guys like that i love older men like that they're some of my favorite people because it's like here's a person i know is not full of shit i can see it in everything that they do but a crucible you have to find your limits sometimes to really know where they're at if you've never been broken by pushing until you break then you are for certain not living up to your potential and when you break yourself like that it's humbling but it also lets you know this is where i'm at and then you look out at the world and you go these motherfuckers aren't here they didn't do that i got everything i need right here <laughs> you don't and know me I son you now yeah i broke down how am i going to put this thing back together yeah. and you do that with conscious intention yeah that's why you do that yeah and then you go and you push and you push and you push until you run into that wall and then you smash your head against the wall until your skull cracks open and you look at your mind and you go, what is this? What is yeah. this? What is this? What is this? That's what I'm talking about. And then you do it again, man. And if yeah. you don't do that, you're not living. You're only alive. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, that's what I always like to use the phrase, uh, you're just existing, you're not living, you know, it reminds me of that. But what you said, uh, also another another sink, uh, I think yesterday I had a tweet that said, uh, destroy yourself and build yourself again. And then a guy, he DM me, uh, how do I do this? So I gave answer to that just before this podcast, actually, like I had some time to kill. I answered on my Telegram channel. And it literally just described what you just said like uh, how I would go about it in a bodily, mentally, and a spiritual way, just decompose yourself, man. Like uh, that's what people don't understand. Like how was I able to run the marathon without almost no training? I'm no David Goggins, but I basically, uh, he was like, he's like a meme. I saw him and I thought this is possible. So I did it as well, you know? And uh, you just break yourself and become somebody new. But what you sketched a little bit, just now this specific way of phrasing it you just remind me of like this girl that i used to know uh it's a sweet girl nothing wrong with her or whatever but i purposefully put myself in that position with her because i knew i was going to burn to the ground like it's not from a, like a red pill or anything but that's how you become a new person so every time i now think back it's like yeah that kid was young or that kid was naive blah blah i did it very purposefully uh, and i i went in there i, I remember you know what i'm just going to do this i'm going to burn myself completely to the ground because only if you burn yourself to the ground, you can get ashes. And only from the ashes, a phoenix can arise. And that's just like, for me, it's logic, but I had to give something. And yeah, it's perfectly logic what you just said, man. Powerful. I love it, man. And honestly, you would you rather be made out of clay or fire? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, but is this like <clears throat> tied to the uncommon mentality that you sometimes talk about these things that you hinted at like these little motives i've heard so many different things but can you phrase it like in a tldr way but very potently in all the things that we've touched upon what is so common about the non-common mentality i have on some things during the course of this conversation and I feel like you've been very effective at helping to sort of build to a culmination right we've, we've kind of we've kind of been layering a conversation and adding to it and there's some principles in here in the uncommon mentality you know I wrote the book but it's it's beyond that and that's why I have been transitioning from the logo centrifugal podcast and website and stuff to just uncommon uncommon because there are it's like there are there are things inside of you that happen as a matter of course as a matter of biology as a matter of genetics as a matter of your existence stuff happens and you have the opportunity to recognize those things and to leverage them to your advantage it's visualization. It's it's how you think and what you think about. It's focus. It's your passions. It's 
your intent, it's your principles. The book on common mentality was basically like, I was this person. Now I'm this person. This person over here was evil. I did dark things. I hurt people. I was a criminal. I was, uh, you know, living a life, the kind of life where people go to prison for life. People kill themselves. People get murdered. I was stealing, doing drugs, and hurting people, and, you know, like, intentionally hurting people. And then, for whatever reason, there came a point in my life where I looked around, and I had experienced, like, three suicides of friends in a year, and murder, and half a dozen people going to prison. I'd been to jail a couple times. I was having real issues with addictions of every kind. Drugs, and attitudes, and porn, and uh, like corrosive behaviors, and hanging out with shitty people. I was addicted to all this stuff. I get addicted to, I'm, I'm an obsessive person. Big time. I just became obsessed with becoming somebody I could stand to be because I had to, I, I came to the very real realization I either change who I am or I die. And, it, and I always say it, it, wasn't, it wasn't immediately obvious like you'd think it would be which choice to make. If you've never been mm -hmm. in a place where you are really considering whether or not you deserve to be on the planet, mm -hmm. you, you really don't understand what I'm saying, but I, I mean it. I didn't want to go on living as who I was, mm -hmm. and I had to decide if I was going to put in the work to become somebody I could stand to be. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Uncommon mentality is the result of that process, and it's it's all the things I put together that, and you know, I I had I had a lot of help along the way, but I put together a system that worked for me, and I wrote a book about that system, and it's a weird book, but a lot of people who have read it have come to me and say thanks, man. I'm doing this thing, or I'm doing these two things, or these three things, and it's made all the difference in the world. And I've had a couple people reach out to me and say, hey man, this book and the things that it had me do have saved me from offing myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, what more could you want? And so the uncommon mentality is, look, you have something inside of you that's special, and you, the uniqueness, the you your soul. And it's just, it's just, dying to live inside of your moments yeah and this whole conversation and everything i've said that's what uncommon mentality is it's embracing who you are and really figuring out what that means and finding your principles really finding like write down your 10 principles these are my rules for life these yeah. are the things that no matter what i'm going to adhere to and maybe it changes over time because you grow wiser but you got to have some rules boundaries are love boundaries set the trajectory if you don't have any boundaries it's chaos, and chaos will destroy you. It'll destroy everything that you are. Yeah. And all that will be left is regret at the fact that you could have lived a life that was amazing, and you didn't live any life at all. It's the same as, you know, as like the internet porn. That's not sex. That's not even a close approximation of it. That's, that's, that's uh, misery. Misery. Yeah. There are a lot of things like that. Cheetos are misery. Uh, you know, um, politics is misery. Uh, like... V video games for six hours a day that's yes. misery yes it's misery your life can be as rich and meaningful as you want it that's uncommon mentality find <laughs> the things that matter to you and do them do them yeah and, and it shouldn't be uncommon that's the point it's it always boggles my mind it's like i'm yeah. i'm just this like retard yeah. from utah who who's like an introvert and autistic and barely figured out how to stay alive mm -hmm. and i can see it yeah why should it be uncommon because you've been deluded and yeah. confused into thinking that you don't have any meaning and that you don't have a soul and that things don't matter and that there isn't a purpose. If you choose yeah. to be uncommon, you choose to say, yes, I do matter. Yes, there is a purpose. And yes, I can do the things that I choose to do. And and the people who do mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cool guy, but I'm not yeah. like a, a billionaire or like the world's greatest anything. I'm just a guy. But even I can see if you choose with intention, you become something more, and that's the process, is become more than you are tomorrow than you were today, according to your own principles, and that's where the magic's at. Yeah, definitely.
it's beautiful what you said uh usually uh we we end the podcast like with like a combination i asked uh or i would ask like what did you take away or do you want to promote something or plug something but i want to say like specifically what you say that society has been diluted or most of us let's apply the pareto rule uh, 80 20 you know like we've been diluted and this is like the opportunity that i take with these conversations is to bring these people who bring the light you know like like these these lanterns that bring like clarity or like these small moments of like, hey, wait a minute, what Chance is saying, hey, what Fury is saying, or what this other dude was saying. It's like, uh, yeah, I can choose my life. You can rectify, you know? And this is like the, the part of like uh, the, the mimetic narrative that we're moving forward with the proper, the proper shit that cannot sometimes be talked about on the timeline. But if somebody's listening, uh, what Chance said, I can't add anything to that. Just that it was fucking awesome, yeah. Look, man, I appreciate it, and I know I get wound up. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> no, it was good. I had a friend at work, and he said to me last week, he goes, because I was ranting at him, and then I had one of those self-conscious moments where I was like, oh yeah, I've been ranting at you for twenty minutes, and you haven't yeah. said anything. Yeah, yeah, and, you know. And he said, man. <laughs> You're a character. You're one of the biggest characters I know. And the reason that I just sit here and listen to you is because I can tell that you really care about people in a real sense. Yeah. And I do. I, I have a profound care for other people. Yeah. Why it hurts me so much to have people in my life who are destroying themselves. I can't have you in my life because it impacts me yeah. so greatly. And that's Definitely. why social media has been a challenge for me. It's because I, I interact with all these people and then suddenly I love them and care for them and then they disappoint me because they're disappointing themselves. Yeah. And it's hard to create that distance for me. It's either all or nothing, man. You know, it's all or nothing. Yeah. So I just, you know, you've, you've, you've been exactly the character that you've been since I came across you. And you introduced me to Roman and... Um, you know, we, and I had you on the podcast and you've done this thing and now, you you know, like, you're known across the world as this guy who just uh, has this remarkable personality and this really entertaining persona, but you're Thank a you. cool guy and you're smart. And, you know, I know some things about you in your personal life. You, you are a, like a genuinely smart, capable person yeah. who also has this alter ego, which is just like the full, it gives you a chance to fully express yourself. Yeah. I like it. I love you, yeah. man. I care about you and I want you to, to, I, I, I love the fact that you're doing it, and I'm 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 honored that I get the chance to be uh, come along for the ride with you. It's been it's been a great uh, joy to me to watch you develop over the course of the past few years, and I can't wait to see where you go. Yeah, thanks, man. Like, um, yeah, I feel I feel really humbled. Uh, definitely true. This is like a form of expression for me, especially these podcasts. If we're like zooming in on this. Uh, like I said to, to Chance, these are like conversations that I would have with somebody. Uh, at a party, I don't like to talk to people because they're fucking normie and fucking dumb. They, in an exchange, usually people take more from me than they give. And uh, some people would say, don't be so shallow, but I have a good memory. I almost like mentally noted, like, no, I'm not getting anything. But what I'm saying from these podcasts that I'm having with people, these discourses, I actually learn a lot. That's why I try to just actually sit back and just listen and uh, prime the, the the person with interesting uh, questions and release all these juices. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I haven't thought about it in this way. And like I said, coincidentally, I just press record. And if somebody then can uh, get something from it, from the podcast, that's lovely as well. So thanks for all the kind words. Thanks for the time. Um, yes, uh, usually I give the opportunity, like, because you took like a break, uh, you know, do you have something that you want to like announce that you're like uh, come back to the timeline, maybe a blog or a newsletter or something like that in that order? Mm-hmm. Because everything that you said was actually a promotion of the light, like a good word. Actually, I really like that as well. It was a good thing to end, but I'd like to give you this last opportunity as well. So go ahead. I'm a facilitator. If you If you want to engage with me, the reason that I want you to engage with me is because I want to help you 
become who you want to be. That's all I want to have to do with you, and then to watch you do it, enjoy it. You can find me on Twitter at the Uncommonist. You can. Uh, I'm I'm in the process of kind of everything was logos and trivial. Now I'm moving it into uncommon. I'm not big on promoting things in that way. You'll find me if you want to. Sure. Um, if you have a sense of humor, you can go over to grifties.com and vote for me to be grifter of the year. <laughs> Yeah. I saw that. I thought legit yeah. it was a joke. <laughs> it is a joke, and I'm not selling anything. That's yeah. the point. It's okay. it's. I call it ironic populism. You know, it's like I just I just want to win this competition because I think it's funny. Go vote for me. Go vote. Go download everybody else and go vote for me and do it every day. I want to win that motherfucker. Go do that. That's my promotion. I, you know, <laughs> know the other stuff. You'll find me or you won't. If the message is meant for you, it'll come yeah. to you. But yeah. but go do that thing for me and we'll be buddies. <laughs> <laughs> sure that, that's beautiful man just stand with that but i saw that it was like it can't be true like where does this come from you know but yeah i nominated uh, myself <laughs> well, yeah. it's amazing man um yeah i had a great talk you know like we can definitely do it again once like uh after i have like a couple episodes I have to give some other people the space as well but i learned a fuck up man it was really good especially especially about i didn't like i don't know where it's always going you know actually i definitely like how you wanted to play the john coltrane uh, improvised for people who don't know jazz um yeah it was yeah, i learned so many things so thank you for your time uh, yeah that's it man cool. thank you too man it was a pleasure and anytime you know anytime yeah. we can make it work yeah i'll be happy to <laughs>